you've expressed your reservations about AI and your fears about that. Yeah, I just think it's the singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially greater than that of a human brain. Yeah, and do you think, I mean, because there's been a lot of sci-fi about AI, um, series like Humans, you know, et cetera, it's, be, it's entering the mainstream, entering the public discourse, that people are understanding the ethical dangers and the, I guess, physical dangers that AI could potentially pose? I mean, most of the movies and TV featuring AI, they don't describe it in quite the way it's likely to actually take place. but. I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is our, what job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and cross sure. our fingers. With all this talk of technology, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, whom I'm sure you know, uh, warned this week that technology could end up ending humanity at some point. Do you share that apocalyptic view of technology? Well, I think it's something that it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I do think we have to worry about it. I don't think it's inherent that as we create uh, superintelligence that it will necessarily always uh, have the same goals in mind that we do. You know, humans don't always have the same goal as other humans. So who gets control of the technology? How is it uh, built in? I don't think there's a need to panic, but I think the dialogue along those levels, the, the people who say, that's, let's not worry at all, I, I don't agree with that. Okay, well... Well, that the Boston Dynamic video was really cool. And Boston Dynamic itself is a really good company, I guess. Uh, but by seeing this two intro and the title of my video itself, you might really have noticed what we are going to talk about. Yes, we are going to talk about the, is AI really a threat to the humanity and, and how, if it yes, how it is, if no, why it is it. And before really saying something else, I know that a lot of experts have really expressed their concern regarding it, but what I have really found out is like they haven't really frame their argument in the most logical manner, you know, most providing every uh, philosophical reasoning or theoretical reasoning, whatever you might call it. So I would really like to express my opinion of what AI is, what AI has been really progressed right now, what are the challenges and how essentially it works in order to just kind of get to that level that, you know, everyone is really fearing right now. And to, to begin with this uh, video and to perspective regarding this, I really want to mention what things that I really want to mention, right? I'm not talking about the basic AI which everyone uses for the pattern recognition, photo or the deep fake, although that is a part of AI itself. But what I'm really talking about is like, you know, the sci-fi Terminator or or any movie or any game, especially like Detroit Become Human, if you have really played that, one of my favorite game was uh, to, and it really perfectly shows like how the androids can really transform itself into the deviant side. Don't you dare fucking move, or I'll bust you worse than last time. And there is other bunch of other cool stuff that you can really talk about and how far are we what are the challenges regarding it just we are going to exactly discuss right in here so before really going on and talking about what the challenges and what are the things is like we have to really decide about how old the AI is you know recently we have started to really kind of guess around the AI around 10 to 15 years old because the computational power has 
hasn't been that great since the invention of the modern computers. The concept of AI is not really new. It really goes back to the 1950s when there was just uh, transistors and diodes. The computation power was so weak that it really never worked. But eventually, the computer, uh, the technology process, the you know the Moore's law get perfected and and everything that worked really really recently as well. So what are the challenges right now? When people really ex when people really ask me, or when people really just say that, you know, oh, we shouldn't, we should really stop. You know, the people like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, or anything other, they have really expressed their concern regarding it, which is really fine. Number one, we should always accountable the uh, the dangerous factor regarding it, and the most precise way to address these kinds of issue as well. So one of the most key concern that you know that I really see is like so there are various things as well right now that we can't even know what it really means to express mathematically number one so essentially what the AI is really working on it 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 is something like we are really programming a piece of software to predict and to do something else and to and to really make it fascinating we have to really make a user pool of really large amount of data itself it can go up to like terabytes to petabytes or gazillions of something like that and to really just kind of get into the aggregate part and suppose if i really want to make a ai system that could really recognize the bees images what it would really do is like you know it will really scan the entire web for the bees images out there and it will just really know what are the basic pattern what are the basic features and it will really abstract all the information like what bees really looks like what are the pixels that is arranged on the screen what are the things that it really does it do, it just kind of gets ag accumulated in the various forms and it just aggregates the data it's really uh, makes its own mathematical model and it makes the also it frames the logical argument of whether whether this is not this is, whether this is really bees or not and that really helps him that really helps itself to identify whether this is actually a bee or not so similarly if we really talk about like you know making a you making uh, let's let's say you know the toughest of the toughest problem what uh humanoid itself like what it will really take us to become to make a humanoid number one thing there are lots of things as well even today itself that we human don't understand it our own clearly like how our body works what how our brain essentially works what do you exactly really mean by uh, love emotion love hatred like you know all this abstract qualities like all our emotions all our like you know what do you really mean by dreaming itself do you know there is no mathematical model that could really describe it this one and if, even if you really come up with a diagram let's say you've come up with a system that could really you know describe myself in a mathematical equation and you really put that in the system then you can possibly create an another system but that is a ridiculous challenging thing itself you know the best of the best example that i can really give you right now let's say about tesla's uh, autopilot system it's the epitome it's the state of the art and the most toughest problem to really deal with in the ai system itself and the level of complexity that it deals with is enormous it's really enormous number one and let's suppose if we in the, in the journey of creating a humanoid you create a humanoid cell that could that has a replicate for you number one now what actually the flaw is really like it is bound to really work in that specific mathematical equation itself now moreover less what that mathematical equation is like you know it's gonna really fake or it really sounds so robotic so predictable number one itself like because it's not that something else you know and the ai of the image recognition is not going to work in the humanoid itself so you have to really take care about that as well and like there are various things as well though so what i really talked about the emotions as well and uh, so to work and think like it to just seeing the pattern things as well and there is also the uh, constraint of the computational power as well number one so i have read somewhere else that it is estimated that the brain that our brain what thinks in just one second 
the world's super power computer it takes around 40 minutes to process so and there is no silicon chip in the world that could really do such enhanced task itself that you know that could render the result in such a real time it's just not possible right now now what the ai is currently working around it's like you know the the company really collects all the data whatever it's in terabytes or petabytes or exabytes in it they collect in their own data centers they applied into the whole uh, crunching data power and then they what uh, they come up with an efficient algorithm itself number one to really just kind of embed into the system so that they can work now that algorithm in today's day the what that essentially works with is not at all precise by any manner it has some flaws but although it's going to get improved by eventually more over the time itself so considering that until and unless the ai is being weaponized which it shouldn't be number one we are pretty much safe we are not going to really develop that humanoid number one which we are not going to develop in a sci-fi terminator and even if we do there is a lot of possible chances that it is really bound to act in a certain constraint regarding of it so let's suppose like you know even if you really uh, mimic a human emotion even if you really mimic uh, like even if you articulate a mathematical equation to the entire body itself what's the really use of it so even eventually we humans are really unpredictable at most of the time and what we can do right now is to really just kind of and that ai system will act like a pretty much robot even though it might be dangerous it might be thing but you know and the and the logical argument is like if we are designing an ai what essentially it will do is until and unless we are really programming it into this to be superior than ourselves in a specific way it can't excel us until and unless there is some you know random uh, mutation is really happening just like a dna mutation or darwin's evolution theory or the sur survival or the survival of the toughest as well and to bunch more of things as well so what is what essentially you can learn from this if you have a mathematical equation if you can really articulate a mathematical expression or, or frame a logic to anything you can make it and are we really close to it we can can't we make the human or terminator definitely we we can make it but it's not the question of about how it's question about when we will make it the one major problem that i really see is uh, to make cheap compact and dense and abundant computation power in less amount of space we don't need that data centers and uh, to really fit that chip or really just kind of a uh, really device that could really handle such a large amount of calculation for the real time as well second thing is like to articulate the thing in mathematical expression what essentially it really means is like if you really want to make a human itself how difficult or how easy it is to really articulate my expression my thought process my you know everything like what i'm really speaking in right in front of you how difficult it is to really articulate so within the so for example what i really say so what my expression right now it is just kind of linking my brain with my hand muscle to the motor cortex as well and as we know the biology it works pretty flawlessly it's it's the result of millions of evolution millions of years of evolution as well and the level of amount of computation power on the on the ai is really required is really enormous for this one just to do this hand movement for the robot and to really precisely optimize this this will take a really long time till then we really have to really uh, wait for the quantum computer which is still under research or something like it but we always you know as still really needed to take the precaution uh, in order to pre prevent that catastrophe as well so being said that this was it what i want to say that uh, can we make the humanoids it's possible but it's extremely ridiculously tough to do it number one thing and even if we did it there are computational constraints that are what i really said and there is you know a lot more things that are really needed to be addressed the concern right now 
uh, being said that if you have any question queries comments leave down in the comment section below and i'll really be happy to get back to you till then stay connected stay subscribed to my channel connect me on instagram linkedin twitter i'll be really happy to connect with you and i'll see you next time bye